Hello everybody, it's Buddy Webb, Midland, Texas. Uh, I, I got an interesting story today and it, it's uh, really, I'm going to focus on extortion, uh, where the ex-wife uh, tried to extort money from me uh, before, you know, before we uh, even got married, and and then she admitted to it on a recording, and and with the threat of if I didn't pay, then she was going to tell everybody I was crazy, and I didn't pay, and that's what she did, and you know, and but after I survived the murder attempt, it, it almost seemed like you know word went out among the the crime ring members, uh, you know, let's call Buddy crazy, and you know, and and I'm the first to admit, you know, it, you know, these crimes are crazy, tunneling under a home, million dollar underground facilities, secret police faking x-rays that's crazy stuff you know it's backed up by hard evidence and fact too you know and but but uh but it seems like that that's modus operandi is to call the crime victim crazy basically to destroy the lives of the innocent crime victims with these lies told by uh, by you know members of this crime ring and then the corrupt police that are involved that are they're helping them and so anyway i want to show you on the very first police report uh that this first time that i called the police for a burglary to my house okay keep in mind i was a 26 year company employee homeowner, granddad, you know, moved here, volunteered to raise money for United Way, you know, never had a felony, etc. Recognized somebody had been inside my home. That's a burglary. That's a felony. I called the police. That's what you do, right? Well, you know, I didn't know there was a, you know, million dollar underground facility in the backyard they're using for, for old show parties and murdering little girls and all that stuff, you know, and, but, but here, this first police report, there's a date, 11 9 2010. There's the police report number, you know. Uh, uh, I found the sliding glass door open. Here's the first two police, Corson and Stephen Truex, okay? Right off the bat, uh, complainant, possible 1096. Because I reported a burglary at my home, they called me possibly crazy. And that wasn't in my attic. That wasn't no tunnels. I didn't even think about that at this time. Okay. And, 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 but what I, what that tells me is these guys, I bet you they knew about the million dollar underground facilities where they were hosting international oil shows connected to this house. And they were already labeling the innocent crime victim as crazy to cover up them crimes. Okay. And I just wanted to start that with, uh, you know, the modus operandi are calling people crazy right here okay so then after i'm ambushed and shot with my phone lines cut premeditated capital attempted murder absolute 100 percent proof shows i wasn't shot with my gun here april chandler one of the police officers and this is you know i'm shot at the 28th 128 right at at, at 10 o'clock so less than two two days later, April Chandler makes up a lie in her little bitty lion brain and calls me a paranoid schizophrenic. I hadn't been diagnosed with that disease. I don't have that disease, that horrific disease. You know, she could have said I had AIDS or whatever. I mean, this is a this is a bold faced lie to cover up a premeditated capital attempted murder told by this uh, this dirty cop, and that's exactly what it is. Let's call it for what it is. You know, and and so. And then Rosa Rodriguez, who, who looks like, you know, is, is her uh, partner in crime right here. She contacted Allegiant Specialty Hospital to evaluate and have me committed. Now, keep in mind, I, you know, I'm the survivor of a murder attempt, home invasion. It looks like the top suspects are some police that might have tried to kill me in my house, okay? When I crawled out, and, and the reason I crawled out is because they cut my phone lines and, uh, and stole my cell phone before I'm shot. So I was forced to crawl out. I crawled out. Pulled myself in my truck, drove to the local convenience store, the 7-Eleven, and Rosie Rodriguez meets me at the, at the 7-Eleven. Climbs into my trunk, starts in my truck, starts giving me first aid. Okay. I didn't know who she was, you know. I mean, I thought the cavalry was there. Like, finally, the police are going to do something. I've been calling and, and reporting these crimes for a year, you know. And finally, we got some, you know, finally, the police are finally going to do something. I just thought it was incompetence, you know. I didn't think it was dirty cops that were involved in, in rigging private homes for burglary, theft, and murder, you know. Who would think that, you know. I mean, I'm a lifelong supporter of law enforcement. Uh, but but I do take a strong stand against police corruption, you know. And, uh, and so... Uh, when I get the police reports later, what I find out is is 
here Rodriguez says she wasn't even there. April Chandler lies and says she climbed into my truck. She's a blonde and she's a she's a brunette. They don't even look alike, you know. I, I know exactly who climbed in my truck. They both lied initially, and and both of them were caught multiple times lying on the police reports and tampering with evidence in this premeditated capital murder time of my life. Big part of it was these lies, like paranoid schizophrenic, made up absolute lies, life destroying lies of an innocent crime victim that, that barely survived a home invasion murder attempt. Okay, now let me show you what happened at the hospital. I was cleared by mental health. And you know why they you know why they, they call mental health? Because of these lies they're being told about me, right? You know, and, and, and mental health comes in and says, hey, that it's not true. We didn't find any problems, you know. And so here I'm cleared by mental health, but these police officers here are making up stories to cover up capital crimes. That's exactly what's going on. Okay. It also happened with people in my company. This right here, Shana Delay Troyer was my HR manager. She had a, a big part in me being put on long-term disability. Uh, and she called me batshit crazy lunatic ravens right here. This is somebody who worked with my company. I reported five co-workers to my supervisor the year before I was ambushed and shot because I believe they knew who was breaking my home. I still believe that. And, and the question's been asked if we had people in my company that weren't involved in these underground oil show parties. I worked for a big oil company, gas company. Okay. All right. And, and so I want to go on to my Facebook post today. I wanted to just start with that. Okay. And this is going to be really interesting. Okay. It's called Follow the Money here. Okay. There's Follow the Money. Short read here. It says, The people in this gang of killers that have been rigging private homes with hidden access for burglary, theft, and murder use the uniqueness of these crimes against the crime victims. They destroy the lives of the innocent victims by intentionally labeling them as crazy. I already showed you proof of that. Right? These life-destroying lies have been told about me over and over again while I live under the threat of death. I promise myself that I will clear my name before I die as I don't want my grandchildren growing up with the shame of the false accusations told by these evil criminals. Here's another story that goes along with the people that have called me crazy to cover up the murder attempt on my life and the other multiple murders, okay? And that's believed that the little girl was murdered at the old show party and the previous homeowner, and I have a feeling they murdered others, okay? Four months before the murder attempt, the ex-wife stuck her finger in my chest, and she says, here's what you're going to do. You're going to pay for me an apartment, I'm telling everybody that you're crazy. She was trying to extort around $1,800 a month from me over the crimes of this house, and I wasn't going to pay, so I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm selling this home, and this is over. I got with my realtor, Janine Pruitt, the same one that found me this rigged home, and we listed my home for sale at market value. It stayed listed for three months, but I had no bidders, and it came down just two months before I was ambushed and shot with my phone lines cut. Now that, now that I survived the murder attempt, there's been a lot of people that have wanted me to sell my home. But of course, they don't want me to, they don't want to pay my price. And, and see, and what that tells you was, the reason I didn't have no bidders, because they had a plan to get my home. They wanted my home, but they were going to get it when they murdered me. That's what it was, okay? They tried to terrorize me into my, selling my home with death threats and repeated crimes being committed against me. I had one guy, I've got, I've got a screenshot. He said, I got two choices. You move or, or me got early, right? I, uh, and, um, and many more death threats. Another guy, he says, we have access to your residence all times. Nobody will ever believe your story. You will be silenced, not if, but when. Uh, I said, when are you going to murder me, Lance? Anyway, that is a violation of the Hobbs Act. Trying to terrorize a person into selling their, their property, their real estate, right? Using corrupt police that look the other way when you report the burglaries to them and the police look the other way. They're allowing the crimes because the, you know, corrupt police, not the good ones, the corrupt police are trying to motivate me to sell my property and because they know it's rigged with underground access and that's going to prove these murders, right? And, and anyway, that's a violation of the Hobbs that carries 20 years in prison, but all crimes are being allowed against me. They want me out because they know this home is rigged with underground access. Just like I said, there's an underground, million-dollar underground facility backyard used for international oil show parties. 
the ex-wife and I got back together, but I wanted to make a recording first. So we sat down together in a question and answer session. In this recording from September 21st, 2011, she admitted to being a witness to the crimes at my home and admitted to trying to extort money, to extort that money from me, which is a felony. She said on the recording that Greg told her to try and extort money from me. Okay, Greg was a rich friend from Nebraska. Okay. Well, 18 months after the murder attempt and then and then divorce after that, she files a protective order against me. Okay. At that time, I hadn't seen her talk to her in 18 months and she lived over 100 miles away. Plus, her boyfriend had told me that she was involved in the murder attempt. In this hearing, her and her lifelong friend from grade school, MPD detective Rosa Rodriguez, testified under oath that I was delusional. I hadn't paid the extortion money and she carried out the extortion threat with the help of the extremely corrupt Midland police officer. That's the one I showed you a minute ago that tried to have me committed. Come to find out, a year and a half later, she was lifelong friends with ex-wife that's alleged to be involved in the murder attempt. The question has been asked if Rosa Rodriguez had been planning on getting some of that extortion money. You know, I think somebody should ask her. You know, she's obviously involved in these crimes. She was caught lying on police reports, perjuring, perjuring herself in court, and tampering with evidence. Ain't no doubt about that. That recording is now a YouTube video called Follow the Money. Maybe we should find out what Greg knows about the premeditated capital murder attempt on my life. I've wondered if those who knowingly spread lies, calling me crazy, could be charged with accessory to capital attempted murder. And, and that's what I said a minute ago. I, it's almost like people in this crime ring, some note went out, let's all call Betty crazy and uh, we'll cover up this failed murder because we didn't get the money. You know, we don't get the house, you know. And, and, and you know, I mean, that, what are they trying to do by by a spreading them life-destroying lies about me. They're trying to cover up the premeditated capital murder attempt on my life. Okay, This is the transcript from the recording that I was mentioned. We're going to listen to a part of it here in a minute, you know. And 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 I could read that to you, but I'm just going to let you listen to it when I when I um, when I play it in a minute. But it's going to say, uh, I'm speaking, you're going to pay me $1,800, $1,200 a month. I'm going to lie about everything I said and tell everybody you're crazy. And she says, I made a mistake. She admitted to it. That's what I'm saying. She admitted to it. And then we get into, I didn't pay the money. And then we get into court. And this is the transcript from the court. And 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 her childhood lifelong friend, dirty cop Rosa Rodriguez, called me delusional. And then she called me delusional. She carried out the extortion threat. Okay? Extortion is a felony. Uh, they're running crime rackets here, folks. Okay? And, and so here's Follow the Money on my YouTube channel, and we're gonna we're gonna play the first bit of this here. You're the one who's gonna make money. That, see, I can never figure out why. Why would this all happen? And then all of a sudden, wow, who the hell is gonna well, follow the cash? Follow the cash. Who's gonna make money off this? Off this house being broken? And how in the world can you know and say that somebody's coming across the attic and breaking in the house and turn around and go, Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna pay me eighteen hundred dollars, twelve hundred dollars a month, or I'm gonna lie about everything that I've seen and tell everybody you're crazy. I made you're the mistake. only one that was gonna make money off the house. I made Does that tie you back into the people breaking the house? No. Conspiracy? Absolutely not. Huh? Absolutely not. In your mind, yes. Obviously, huh? it does. Uh, in your mind, obviously it does. You know, I'm it's, standing for the outside. No, it's absolutely not true. I stand for the, the truth of the matter is that's what Greg is, suggested. It's a crime opportunity. That's what Greg suggested. Well, okay, so it wasn't her fault that, you know, she uh, committed felony extortion because Greg suggested it, okay? And and so, you know, I just want to uh, make that real clear on this. Oh, he's crazy, is that it was all about this extortion and, and her childhood friend, Rosie Rodriguez, okay? A, a friend of mine, he saw this, he's like, holy cow, this is incredible evidence. So, so did you, do you think your ex-wife hired the secret police to attack you? Her former, and, and I wrote back, her former boyfriend just posted this on Facebook about a month ago, and it came out in court that she was a lifelong friends with Rosa Rodriguez. They went to elementary school together, okay? Arthur Welch tagged me on this about a month ago. He posted it on his Facebook. Cops were recorded hiding evidence and laughing about this man being shot. I was dating this guy's ex-wife when I overheard her talking. And from the things I heard, she, her, uh, when I heard she had tried to have him killed for insurance money. And to hear how many police were involved, one her, one, her longtime personal friend, I won't let Buddy Wayne Webb be laughed at. Her final words were to me, I will have you shot too.
Okay, and, and and so Arthur's story hadn't changed in eight years. Okay, I crawled out on my hands and knees because the people that shot me had stolen my cell phone and cut my phone lines first. This was a murder attempt. When I got to the 7-Eleven, Rosie Rodriguez climbed in my truck and starts giving me first aid, but I didn't know who she was. I would later see that she said on the police reports that she wasn't even there and it was April Chandler claiming that she climbed in my truck. When I returned from the hospital, crippled for life, I found my stolen phone planted behind my nightstand, but I also found this picture of Rodriguez leaned over my nightstand with Chandler next to her. They were planting my phone that was stolen before I was shot by surprise. I was supposed to bleed out and die. This was cold-blooded, premeditated, capital tempting murder. This camera that they got caught on, that there was an attempt to disable it, and they accidentally started it. They didn't know they had started it, okay? This right here at the top, this this coming from police reports, you know. Uh, I contacted Buddy at the ex examination room. Uh, Buddy stated he lives there. He was locking. He said he locking up for the night, and he makes sure all the doors are locked. He was going to bed, you know. <clears throat> that and that was an absolute lie. As the as a nurse of the hospital recorded me saying burglar alarms were going off over and over. But here you got Chandler here or Rodriguez here saying that uh, I was I was I told her I was going. To to bed, you know, and, and that was a lie. She also said my phone wasn't charged, and that's another lie as I had my cordless phone in my pocket because my cell phone had been stolen and it sits on the charger and it was it was charged all the time. It was just lie after lie after lie. Buddy was delusional. Okay, you see, that's what they're doing to cover up this. But here, Rosa Rodriguez is leaned over my nightstand. I found my stolen cell phone planted behind this nightstand when I got back from the hospital, my home phone back working. My cell phone was stolen and my home phone was cut. And then she was, she was, here she was excuse making, saying, oh, he said his phone was not charged. That's a lie. That's that cordless phone set on the charger 24 7. I didn't say that. Okay, I just want to show you that. Next, in 2017, I was emailing evidence to the Office of Texas Attorney General Paxton, Greg Paxton, when I was advised to contact the Texas Rangers Public Integrity Unit. They were created to investigate allegations of public corruption, which is exactly what uh, was needed. But when I did, a local Texas Ranger was, a, was assigned to my case instead. I was concerned that he would be friends with some of the other local law enforcement officers. Thus, there would be a bias. Okay, And, and that's easy to understand right? And and so they pulled a fast one on me, so what happened? Ranger Strain asked, to, asked me to send him the complete story, so I emailed around 70 fact-filled emails, but oddly, he rarely responded or asked any questions. He finally just quit responding, so I didn't know if he got fired, quit, or was bribed to look the other way by members of this racketeering crime ring. I told him in one email that I believe the most important crime of all was when the ex-wife had told me with 100% sincerity that a group of doctors are killing people for profit. Ranger Strain asked me, how would a doctor make money killing people? And I replied, I can only speculate, but the person to ask is the one who told me this. And since you have her on tape admitting to extortion, which could send her to prison for many years and could also be used as evidence to her involvement in the capital murder attempt of my life, then she might be motiv motivated to tell you all about it. You can hear her on the video called Follow the Money, okay? Uh, I've, and I've been very serious about her telling me that there was a group of doctors killing me for profit and come to find out uh, her brother-in-law was a doctor and I didn't know it and he happened to be my doctor on the night I was shot and that was when it was proven the x-rays were faked you know and that's when they that's when they uh, uh, he took the x-rays of a guy that had been shot with a shotgun because I hadn't been shot with a shotgun that guy's missing his heel bone so they took me into surgery and cut my heel bone out to match the faked x-rays okay and and so all that's all proven you know but I think them guys that were faking x-rays probably know something about the these doctors that are killing for profit, you know? And and so anyway, I'm trying to get a law enforcement ranger strain here, right, to, to act on this. And I'm providing them evidence. She admitted to felony extortion.
extortion, right? And and that's what these emails are. April 4th, 2017 at 11.59. This home was rigged with hidden access before I moved here and the stone services has gone on daily for six years, not to mention the murder attempt or intentional maim and mutilation in the hospital. But I believe the biggest crime is what I was told by the ex concerning the doctors. She whispered in my ear with 100% sincerity, the secret is a group of doctors are killing people for profit. I believed her then and I believe it now, except I have no proof. You have a recording or admitting to extortion, which could be used to get more information from her about these doctors and all of the other crimes. Remember that she told me about a drug which would cause cancer and then hinted they were doing this. Uh, I suspect the same people that falsified my medical records are with this group and most likely planned my death in advance. They would expect me to die after being shot directly in an artery with my phone lines cut. Okay. And she told me in another conversation there was a medicine that would cause cancer in a known number of days. She was a cancer nurse, okay? And that's another thing I wanted Ranger Strain to ask her and, you know, and motivate her to talk was her admitting to felony extortion. Ranger Strain, one of the rare questions he asked, how would a doctor make money killing people? And that's when I said, I can only speculate, but the person to ask is the one that told me. And since you have her on tape admitting to extortion, which could send her to prison for many years and being used as a vet, uh, you know, and involvement in the murder attempt. I'm my life, my life, it might motivate her. I've already read that to you. I'll, I'll go on to say my best guess is those doctors were involved in the sex trafficking, human trafficking, racketeering, crime ring, and the underground homes and all that. Here are some other ideas. She was an oncology nurse working for Texas Oncology in Odessa when I met her, and oncology doctors make money when people get cancer. They make a ton of money off the chemo drugs given to cancer patients, and other doctors have been arrested on similar charges. I'll put a news story at the bottom. My dad recently died of a cancer that don't run in the family, and I suspected other people that I know may have become victims too. She might tell you who, okay? Well, anyways, uh, Ranger Strain, as I said, he just quit replying. You know, I don't know. I, you know, I had no idea what happened to uh, <coughs> Ranger Strain. Here, I did a, a email search for him. 72 fact-filled emails. I, I recently uh, told Sheriff Kreiner and the Texas Rangers because I've been contacting them you need to go look at these emails. These things are packed filled videos and, and, and pictures and stories and, and just uh, evidence all over the place. And so I, I think that's all I got. And, and so, uh, I, I thought y'all'd find that interesting. Hey, the crimes are still going on. You know, I told uh, actually Arthur Welch. I was talking to him online yesterday, and uh, and you know, and I know he, he he has no faith in in the police. You know, and I'm telling him I don't believe that all police are bad. I believe that somewhere out there we have some good police officers, and and they're going to stop this. Uh, you know, breaking into homes and murdering innocent people, and, and and the crap that's been going on here. You know, and and you know, and 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 so anyway, we're talking about it. And he was surprised when I told him. I said, last time I heard somebody in my house was in the last hour. The crimes at my house have never stopped. And the reason is, is because there is a million dollar underground facility in the backyard and it's being protected. You can go to Google Maps, look up 3802 Fair Circle at Midland, Texas, look at my backyard and you'll see that large facility. That's where I believe the old show parties are. That's where that little girl was murdered in 2010. And they're trying to keep the public from finding that out. This is Buddy Webb, Midland, Texas.